ESPN's March to the PBA World Championship continues with live coverage of the PBA Tar Heel Open from Country Club Lanes West in Burlington, North Carolina. We are down to our final five bowlers. First from New Albany, Indiana, making his second TV appearance of the season, looking for his first ever career title, Mike Wolf. The 1987 Rookie of the Year with three career PBA titles, a second place finish, and this season's TOC from Elmira, New York, Ryan Schaefer. From Bolingbrook, Illinois, near Chicago, with three career titles, one of 15 men to ball, 300 on TV, Steve Jarris. A PBA Hall of Famer with 22 career wins and almost two million dollars in earnings from Atlanta, Georgia, Ryan Fox. His fifth all time with 28 career wins. And today makes his third TV appearance in the last four weeks. The defending champion of the Tiger Open, it is Pete Weber. for the PBA event here in North Carolina. Hello again, everyone, and welcome Dave Ryan and Randy Peterson. Time now for the brackets. Randy's starting with a wild card. Dave, the wild card match features Mike Wolf. He's going to look for his first career win on TV as he takes on Ryan Schaefer. The first semifinal pits Brian Voss, who won earlier this season in Memphis, and Steve Jarris, who only lost two games in match play. Hall of Famer Pete Weber, PDW, waits until the second semifinal to begin his title defense. Right now for Wild Card Match. Second ever TV appearance for Mike Wolf. His hometown just outside Louisville, Kentucky, and the PBA stops there next week. The Odor Eaters Open. So he'll be about 10 miles from home. Chance to stay in his own bed for the first time in some two months. He'll so they look forward to that. Today, trying for a first over win. And a lot better start than his first telecast in Tacoma, where his first shot went washout. He did convert the spare. He takes on Ryan Schaefer. Another TV appearance for him. You saw him at the Tournament of Champions. Gave Jason Couch a great match. Ten pin for Ryan to get things started. And Ryan Schaefer doing something a little bit unusual for him. He's a big power player, and he likes to throw the big hook. But he told me last night he's really worked on a straight game. And his straight game got him here today. Takes out the ten pin with a spare ball. By the numbers, Wolf and Schaefer, Randy. Well, you can see a big difference in average, and the reason why Mike Wolf got here is because his opponents in match play just didn't bowl very well. Very high spare conversion rate for Ryan Schaefer because he didn't shoot as many. Season match play record in nine appearances outstanding. No wins on tour, but it's bowled well. All season long, in the pocket for Ryan Schaefer. Just inside the second arrow, or closer to the third arrow. But again, pretty straight for Ryan. Keeping his hand underneath it, controlling change of direction down the lane. First TV appearance of Mike Wolf's career came in Tacoma. And he was the wild card, same position he's in today. Told us this morning before the match, I learned quite a bit from that first appearance. Chance to be under the lights a bit and gain some valuable air time as he's got a difficult spare coming up. Watch the direction Mike Wolf walks. Now freeze it right there. His approach is going to the left. When you want to throw the ball to the right, walk left. Now watch him fill in the gap right here. The slide goes to the right, gets the arm, the hand tight to the ankle. Tries to cover, and he's successful. To get here, Mike Wolf. Okay, Kretzer, Bob Learn Jr. Lost to Steve Jarris 3-0 in the round of eight. 
So now he's the wild card. With the fewest match play losses, Bruce Falcon and PBA Rookie of the Year favorite Brad Angelo not far behind. Third frame, Mike Wolf. Perfect. And avoiding the open frame on the right lane, the second frame really helped him to make a good shot here. Fourth arrow, that ball's dead packed. A full five or six boards further left of Ryan Schaefer. Schaefer 10 and 5 this week in match play. The fifth ranked player. As the march to the world championship continues, comes in high there, and he's got to cover three for his mark. Again, another power player, and you're going to see Ryan Schaefer drift to the left as well. Third step goes left. Since he doesn't drift as far left as Mike Wolf does, he doesn't have as big a gap to fill in with that slide step. Without a lot of wins recently in his career, still a very good season. And the key is he is top eight. Trying to get himself into the Super 16 and bypass all the qualifying in the season-ending world championship. Taylor, Michigan, outside Detroit. We mentioned the 10-5 match play record. He got by Queen Weiss and Angelo in the round of eight. That's the best of five, went the distance. Brad Angelo, in my opinion, Dave, front runner for Rookie of the Year this year. Took Ryan Schaefer the distance, fifth game in deciding game. Flush in the pocket for Schaefer. He really lets the ball go down the lane quite a ways before it takes off and hits the oil for his hook. Yeah, and he has a, lo a little bit of loft, too, and loft delays hook. I expect him to start moving in. One of the characteristics this week here at Country Club Lanes is the oil pattern broke down very quick. Even though it's a synthetic surface, the lanes seem to change in a matter of two or three games. The Earl Anthony Geico Classic worth competing in for the wild card. Get some help. As the seven goes down, but he's still got the two eight. Strike there would have given him a ten pin lead. We began the frame even. And nobody has struck on the right lane yet. Mike Wolf gets the ball a little bit wide. And then the ball actually loses energy and rolls out. It stops traveling in that left direction. He needs to needs to throw a hook ball into this two eight to cover the back pin. 64 plus percent. Multi-pin conversions does it there on the double wood 2-8. And Mike Wolf trying to become the second wild card performer in the past three weeks to win the tournament after Chris Barnes accomplished the feat in Dallas a couple weeks back. Since the new format started September of 01, we've had five winners come from the wild card spot. Wolf trying to make it number six. Fifth frame. Perfect ball. A lot of confidence on that lane for Mike Wolf. You can tell it just in his posture and his demeanor. And when he gets up on the left lane, he feels comfortable. And speaking with him today, before the match, it's obvious he's much more confident and relaxed than he was in Tacoma before his first ever show. He was a little bit nervous, certainly. Part of the learning curve out here mm -hmm. on the PBA Tour. Fifth frame shape. We're even. Chance for a 10-pin lead with a strike. ESPN NSYNC shows it to you. Looking for late help. Didn't get it. And he got it to the same spot Mike Wolf got it, got it to when Mike Wolf was on the right lane. And both guys get the similar reaction. The ball just not making it back. Ryan only leaving the 2-pin instead of the 2-8. Perfect on his spare conversions. And he certainly will have no trouble making the two pin. Looks to keep that up just with a two pin. The semi finalist wants to get there, taking on the wild card three times from this slot. The player who has to battle a wild card competitor three times. Players have won the championship. Pete Weber in Louisville has done it. Parker Bone the third in Kirkland, Washington, and Patrick Healy this year in Kansas City. So it can be done. Wild cards can win, and those playing the wild card in this opening match get to the semis and all the way through to a championship. 
But it's the extra match. It's not easy. Schaefer works on a spare. Sixth frame. Threads the rack. Adjusting well on the left of our TV pair. We are all even. A wild card match from Burlington, North Carolina. Mike Wolf, Ryan Schaefer head to head. Each trying to gain valuable points and win a title in NC this afternoon. ESPN's exclusive live presentation of the PGA Tar Heel Open is brought to you by Odor Eaters. Put Odor Eaters in, kick foot odor and wetness out. By Miller High Life, live simply, proudly, boldly, manly, this is the High Life. And by Cambridge Credit Counseling, find out how good it feels to be debt free. Country Club Lanes, West Burlington, North Carolina, located in the heart of the Greensboro, Raleigh, Durham areas in North Carolina. 42 Lane Center hosting our event here today. Welcome back to Brian Landers. Give us live coverage of the PGA continuing here on ESPN. Great feel with Brian Voss and Pete Weber, a couple of Hall of Famers, but big trouble early on one of our TV pair. The right lane, we haven't had a strike yet, giving the players some fits. Not really sure why that is. They get practice, but TV lights, TV day whole different situation. Look at the oil pattern, see how it's breaking down. Let me show you what I did this All week right. on the oil pattern. <laughs> 37 feet pattern A for accessible. Players get there a couple different ways. They can play the straighter line from out, or they can get in like Mike Wolf is doing and play that deep inside line. When the lanes start to change, the players will migrate towards the center of the lane looking for more oil. The problem is that deep inside line, they don't have a lot of room to move. Who's going to win today? The player whose line does not break down. Randy, for all the latest news, information on the PBA Tour, head to the Tour's official website at pba.com. Ticket information for the season-ending World Championship also available on the website by clicking on the Arena Tickets link of the home page. There are plenty of good seats available, but they're going fast. At the Taylor Sportsplex outside Detroit, the March to the World Championship rolling on here in Burlington, North Carolina. Sixth frame, Mike Wolf looking for a 10-pin lead. And a two-pin. Well, you know, here's the issue. You know, folks at home are watching saying, well, why doesn't he just straighten out his angle? The problem is when you throw that much power, as soon as he straightens that angle out just a little bit, that ball's going to go right through the nose of Brooklyn. Picks up his pair. Mike still has not watched his TV show tape of his TV debut in Tacoma. I asked him why this morning. Well, he's been on the road eight straight weeks. No chance to check out the home VCR, that's for sure. Three spares on the right lane. Not one ball in the pocket on the right lane. Perfect on the left. He's on the left now. Drifted a little high. He'll take the break and a late trip. Trip four. Professional bowler's best friend. Ball drifts in high. Trips out the 4-6. Nice break. See if Ryan Schaefer can get our first double of the, of the afternoon. It won't be easy on the right lane. Which adjustments will he make? Looking for a 10-pin lead. That's the right adjustment. Well, you know, this is going to come down to who made the proper adjustment, and the adjustment that Ryan Schaefer just made was he changed bowling balls. Now, notice that ball got to that same spot that he left a 2-8 on, but this ball gets back. Higher friction ball, stronger down the lane. Finally, a strike on the right lane. Our first of the day. Now he's over to the left, where he has been more proficient and he gets to finish the match on the left lane. Comes in high through the nose, just six down. Well, he got the late trip, the, the late trip, the nine pin fell late. But watch this ball bite the lane. Doesn't push far enough right to that spot, goes right through the nose. Got a nice break of tripping that nine pin out late. Because let me tell you something, the three, six, nine, ten is the hardest non-split spare to make on tour. Takes out his three. If the nine pin was still there, he wouldn't have made that. Right. Why is it the most difficult? 
the reason why it's the toughest spare to make is because you've got to throw a hook ball into that spare to cover the nine pin. The problem is you get a little bit too far to the right. It either goes in the channel or it doesn't hook back hard enough to get the three nine. A little bit left of that, it chops the three nine off the six ten. Back to Wolf looking for his first double of the day. Strike here, he's up three pins. Eighth frame, Mike Wolf. Perfect ball. Oh, 60 feet to success for him. These teams hope for success on the NHL ISIS tonight. Stars and Blackhawks, 6 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. And then on ESPN, either the Rangers or Colorado Avalanche, perhaps you see St. Louis taking on the Minnesota Wild from the XL Energy Center in St. Paul, Minnesota. Either or, depending on where you are in the nation. NHL hockey coming your way. We're leading to the World Championship. They're leading to the playoffs and the Stanley Cup Finals. And during the promo, I was just going to say, if I was Mike Wolf, based on what Ryan Schaefer did on the left lane, I'm moving in. two pins. He has a mark. And after finally getting a double, cannot get the three-bagger. Marks to the PBA World Championship. Ryan Schaefer already in. He's clinched his spot on the top eight into the Super 16, which means he bypasses all qualifying. And the rest of our five bowlers in today's TV show. First place for today's event gets 25000 The majors are double the points and much more money on the line. Our fourth major just two weeks down the road. Success on the right lane. And isn't it interesting how things work out in our sport? First, they can't hit the right lane. Now Ryan Schaefer, last two shots, strikes. Now the issue is the left lane. The lane they, have, they were zeroed in on to start the match. With his wife, Michelle, watching back home in upstate New York. Southern tier of New York State. We have a one-pin match. With two strikes in the 10th frame, Ryan Schaefer will be the winner. He had a strike in the ninth foundation frame. Now the 10th. Flush in the pocket. Ryan Schaefer is going to get his hand to spin around the side of this ball. And I'll watch his hand at the bottom of the swing. Watch it rotate right there. Now what that spin does, it gets to push the ball to the right and gets it to return. He made the adjustment after his shot. In the eighth frame, he is one strike and two pins away from eliminating Mike Wolf. Mike Wolf shaking the head still in search of his first ever TV win. Schaefer trying to knock him out. The ESPN set shows you. He looked a little bit high and yeah. leaves the four. Up, man? Ball drifts just a pinch high, leaving the four pin with a spare. He's going to shoot 216. Mike Wolf would need two strikes and nine pins to win. He covers. Now it's up to Mike Wolf. Now the pressure is on his shoulders. Two strikes. A nine-pin count to win this match. That would be his first ever career TV victory. He told us before the match today, Randy, he has learned by watching fellow PBA bowlers, all the TV shows he hasn't been on. About big moments like this, now it's his chance. A situation he's never been in before. Does not respond. No chance. Too much wiggle when he needed to hook off that spot. First couple of shots in that lane, he couldn't get it to hook back. This one overhooks. So Schaefer wins, and he's off to the semifinals. Live and learn, right? Again, part of the learning curve for Mike Wolf. Struggling on the right lane. Ryan Schaefer off to the semifinals to take on PDW. The Hall of Famer. The day ends for Mike Wolf, but a great week for him. As he makes his second ever TV show, we'll see him next week in Louisville, Kentucky. But for now, a couple of legends head to head. Jarrus taking on Brian Moss.
five left-handers made it to the show at the inaugural Tar Heel Open back in 2001. After beating Parker Bone the third, Ricky Ward would take on Jason Couch in the championship match. He would beat Couch to end an almost two-year winless streak for his fifth PBA Tour title. Fans ready to go this year at the Tar Heel Open. Not far from Greensboro, North Carolina. A lot of energy in the building. Brian Voss, you know you need to win this tournament today and fare very well next week in Louisville to make the top eight, which is so crucial in the World Championship. You've faced big pressure before. Can you do it again at this point of your career? Well, I, I think I can do it any time I stand up here. Uh, you know, the lanes are a little tricky today. I'm going to be a little more conservative in my trajectory and and uh, just, just go out there and, and work real hard. What were your big keys of the week to success to get this far? Well, Bull and my buddy Norm Duke kind of got me going. That was a really great match. I know some of the fans here saw it. But that kind of put the spurs in me and got me going. And uh, so, hi, Norm. Thanks. <laughs> He's a preacher ready, looking for career win number 23. Thank you. What a match that was with Norm Duke in the round of 32. They went seven games. They went the distance. Norm Duke shooting 268 to close. Brian Voss, 289. Norm Duke had him down 3-1. Brian comes back to win that match. Completely different bowling ball than he's used all week. Double wood. You can see Brian is more of an old school, more traditional stylist, straighter player. He can play the big hook at times. He's very versatile, can do a lot of things with the bowling ball with his hand. You heard him say how tricky the lanes were. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Covers the 2 8. First thing you notice, Randy, is the very slow pace, deliberate style on the approach. His body's more upright. Not so much torque and movement upon the release of the ball at the foul line. Yeah, and square shoulders, you're fairly square to the foul line versus the power players that are of today that are real open, high back swings open, bent elbows and cocked wrists. Taking on Steve Jarris from Chicagoland, gets a late break on his first ball. And that was on the right lane. The bowlers really struggled in that wild card match by the numbers. Jarris and Voss. And you see Brian Voss with the higher average. He averaged 248 for the match play portion of this tournament. Hence the very high strike percentage and the very high spare conversion percentage. Steve Jarris is attacking the lanes completely different than everybody else. Even though Brian's going straighter, Brian's further left than Steve Jarris. Oh, 10 of the pit. Perfect ball for Jarris. The deliberate four-step approach of Steve Jarris. Watch this. Nice and square to the foul line. A lot like Brian Voss. Comes up and out of it just a little bit. But he does that when he's trying to throw the ball hard. And he's throwing it hard today to keep the ball on a straight line. The second round of qualifying, I bowled with Brian Voss. He only averaged 218. Trouble one looking familiar. Again, a 2-8. Match play, he just lit him up. Brian Voss struggling with reaction. He's trying to go straight. A little unsure at this point. Trying to keep the perfect mark with another mark. Multi-pin spare conversion. 2-8. Does it again. And Paul Kaler, our statistician, professional bowler, and myself just looked at each other and we both said the same thing. Brian needs to move further right. Play him more like Steve Jarris is playing him. We'll see if he makes the adjustment. Is that on the right lane or both? Both lanes. Yeah. See, I think when you're going straight, it's not as big an issue. Match play record. Ten appearances so far in his 21st year on tour. Is that great success? That comes in a tad high, and the four pin somehow doesn't get help. <laughs> and Brian makes sure the pins understand his feeling on the issue. Now, Brian went light the first two balls, so what he did was he got his hand to rotate around the ball a little bit more so it would change direction. 
and it changed direction just a pinch too hard, and that's what he thinks about the forfeit. You Bobby. think that might make Sports Center? Maybe. I think so. Covers for a single pin conversion as he keeps that number up. And while we have a moment, I must say happy belated birthday to our producer, Mike Roth. We really blew it last week, Podsy. It was his birthday last Sunday. It was on the show. And we, we apologize, we Mike, for that. Happy B Day. Ian Scott Katz, our director, crew do an incredible job week in and week out. There's some help again for Jarris as he continues his role with a three-bagger to start. And a nice lead. Three-bagger, nice. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, our entire ESPN PBA crew. Live coverage continuing from Burlington, North Carolina. Tar Heel open. Jarris on late 17. Perfect ball. Come on. Four bagger to start the match for Jarris. 60 feet to success for him. And as long as Steve Jarris doesn't grab it at the bottom of the swing, that ball will stay on line every time. It's just a question now of how long that reaction will hold up. It's been a while since Brian Voss has won this year in Memphis. It was his 22nd career win. Made another show in Detroit, but lost pretty early in that one. His sons were on hand watching that day in Memphis. An amazing moment. Gets help there. That afternoon in Tennessee, he had to step up late and throw huge shots, a double, to be able to win the tournament. He knows pressure. Well, right now he's trying to fine-tune that bowling ball to get it to the 1-3 pocket, and he better hurry up because Steve Jarris is perfect through four frames. First in Memphis. The next week, taking on Walter Ray Williams, Jr. for the title. Online 17, missed the pocket. And you don't see Brian do this very often, but I think that this was a bad choice for him. I think a bowling ball that doesn't hook quite as much and getting into that spot where Steve Jarris is was, was probably the right move. Needed a strike here to be down by a 23 pin. Instead, he covers the mark in his fifth frame. And Jarris now a 33 pin lead, a chance to go up 43 pins with a five bagger to begin his match. Slight adjustment, Steve told us today before the match, Randy, on his hand positioning on the ball and the arm swing. Yeah, he said he was re gripping it during the swing. Simplified things. The perfect game continues for Jarris. And right now, Steve Jarris is really putting a good touch on the bowling ball. He's relaxed his hand to keep that, to take that re-gripping out, and there's no grabbing. You notice that there was there was no jerky movement when he got to the foul line, and that tells me that that release was super clean. He's got a weak hand right now with a strong bowling ball, letting the lane and the bowling ball do all the work for him. Great start for Jarris. It is third TV show of the year, fifth in Philadelphia, where our Randy Peterson won it. Two weeks later in Albany, fifth as well. This one drifts away from the pocket, right. and the perfect game Stay with expires. And you're going to get a first-hand glimpse of how tough this spare is. But to me, that shot looked slow. And when the ball speed slows down, it gives the ball time to hook. Sixth frame for Jarris. Pin stands and an open frame could really open the door for Brian Moss. He just has one strike so far in his first five frames. That in the fourth. Now, little daylight for the Hall of Famer. Trying to come back in the semifinal match and get himself in position to win another title. Burlington, North Carolina, our event rolls on. All 1,000.
two events, including two in Japan. Run number 20 of the year. We've had 18 different winners already. If Pete Weber and Schaefer win today, it'll be number 19, believe it or not. The days in on the road shows us as we march on to the World Championship. Taylor Sportsplex in Taylor, Michigan, outside Detroit. Tickets are available. Log on to PBA.com, and the arena ticket link is your ticket to get to the World Championship. Our days in on the road. Louisville next week, the final non-major stop of our season. We'll see if Brian Voss can take advantage of the Jarris open frame in the sixth. Steve's max score now 264. Can Voss respond? Yes! And the reason why Brian Voss has 22 titles and I only have 13 is I am wrong again. Instead of moving right and going to a, a lower friction ball, Brian takes the same ball, moves in, hits it harder, creates more reaction. Try to remain perfect, semi-final matches. With a win in Memphis and win in Detroit in the final four. With his respective shows. He's batting 500 in title matches so far this year. Wants to get back. ESPN 6 shows your perfection for Brian Moss. And now Steve Jarris is going to feel something he hasn't felt the entire match. Pressure. This is what happens. You've got to get the ball to hook into this spare. You get a little bit too far to the right, it goes in the channel. That time, it was a little bit too far to the left and chops the spare. On the right lane, off the open frame. That comes in light. That was not that bad. It's all right. Overcompensation from the shot on the left lane. The left lane shot, slow. This one, to me, looked fast. The lead evaporates quickly for Steve Jarris. Can he respond to the pressure? Are you asking me? Yes. I, I, I don't know. Not easy. Spare, obviously, only gets the double wood, leaves the 10 pin, a second straight open frame for Jarris, who had been rolling with five straight strikes to begin this match. And now things have drastically changed in the favor of Voss. And no matter what Steve Jarris does in this frame, Brian Voss can get up in the eighth frame and strike and take the lead. We talked to Brian Voss prior to this match in the interview about responding to big moments. We know he needs to win here and do well in Louisville, very well, to make the top eight. As the march to the World Championship continues, how about some help for Jarris? And this is a nice break. All right. Ball comes in light. And the old trip two. Head pin goes to the sidewall and bye-bye two. Nice break. Now, let's see Brian Voss, two perfect shots, made the adjustment. Let's see if it's the right one. The strike here, he takes a lead by four pins. Just down six. After a tough start. That's because Jarris had the five bagger. Yeah! He knows how to step up. Hello, ball reaction. You want to get your swing loose and you want to get to where you're making really good shots, create a ball reaction that looks really good to you. When you know you've got a little bit of mistake area, a little left, a little right. Foundation frame now for Voss. His sons Josh and Cameron watching closely back home in suburban Atlanta. Would love to see Dad respond. say so. Now a 14 pin lead. Boss is trying to win. These golfers trying to win as well. Later today, join Mike Tirico and Colonel Strange. Live final round coverage of the Nissan Open beginning at 3.30 Eastern Time, 12.30 on the West Coast on ABC Sports. Watch the best of the best, including last week's champion Tiger Woods from Riviera in L.A. Pacific Palisades. 3.30 Eastern on ABC. Jarris has an answer on lane 18. And taking advantage of the nice break in the eighth frame, the trip two. But no matter what Steve Jarris does, he cannot shut out Brian Voss. Nice and straight and nice tight line to the pocket. 
Big foundation frame strike for Jarris. He's now down four. He can go back up for the strike. Had it on cruise control the first five, five frames. He's in a battle now. Looks for a three dagger. Oh, eight pin. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And right there, Steve Jarris just got a horrible break. The bowling ball is going to get to the five pin and chop it straight back. The five pin normally goes into the eight, and that is an awful break. Covers. There's the eight pin he had hoped for on the uh, strike ball. Came back for the roll two. A mark and count will win it for Voss and send him into the finals. Keep him perfect in semifinal action this year on the PBA Tour. It's amazing how quickly the match can turn around after Jarris had the five back to begin things. Got in trouble in the sixth and seventh. Got the nice break in the eighth. Beautiful shot in the ninth. Perfect shot in the tenth. And he got nine. Ross doesn't watch. Deep in thought. We'll take that break. Good pin action for Steve Jarris on the left of the TV pair. Now it's up to Voss. Brian Voss with good count on the first ball and a spare and good count. He will win. 227 pace right now. Strike on the first ball, it's all over. Brian Voss said it was today. He loves the excitement of making TV still after all these years and his great career. Still, the adrenaline rush for moments like this one. Ooh, 10 pin. And we, we saw a lot of pocket 710s this week. Only leaving the 10. Spare, and how many pins there, PK? Spare seven, Brian Voss wins. That ball needs tape, so I'm not gonna use it. Hmm. Brian Voss normally does not use a different spare ball. He uses his release to flatten the shot out. Look out. Oh. <laughs> Look out. <laughs> he barely was able to graze the left side of the 10. This is a high friction bowling ball he's using, trying to throw it straight. And watch this reaction. Oh. oh. Seven pins. For a victory and a spot in the final. He gets eight. That's what he needed him right at the head pin. And Brian Ross is through to the final round. Search of his second title of the season. He won in Memphis. Must like the Southeast. Success in North Carolina for Brian Boss, the Hall of Famer. Another Hall of Famer. Pete Weber will compete when we return. Nervous about foot odor and wetness? Get Odor Eaters insoles and kick the problem. Odor Eaters gives lasting comfort and durability as it kicks out heavy-duty odor and sweat. Now put ESPN's exclusive live coverage of the PGA Tar Heel Open is brought to you by Odor Eaters. Put Odor Eaters in, kick foot odor and wetness out. By Bear Aspirin, take it for pain, take it for life. And by Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. Carolina Hurricanes, about half an hour or so away from where we are, playing Raleigh. He's playing Greensboro, much closer struggle for Paul Maurice and the Canes this year. All bowlers are trying to get to the top eight spots to bypass qualifying and make the World Championship Super 16. Danny Wiseman in the eighth spot. He's bowled well this year, and he is the subject of this week's Miller High Life. Get to know them. Danny Wiseman. I got started in bowling. Um, I was about four years old. In the first league at seven, I averaged 119. Wow. Man, I was hooked. It was, it was incredible. The first choice was baseball. I played baseball from day one. When I was nine years old, I was clocked on a ball over 50 mile an hour. 
Greatest Moment Tour. Um, the, the car showing former champions in 92, and my father was there, and he was uh, he only had a few months to live. I mean, it was the last tournament he ever went to, or the last time he ever saw me bowl. I'm not a bad guy. I'm not evil or mean or whatever, you know. I'm me. I'm, I'm a very generous, very nice guy. The clothing is, is part of the image. There is one guy, and we're very good friends, that I would love to bowl on TV. That's Weber. Let me and Pete go at it on TV. That would be an interesting show because he can bring whatever he wants to me, but I don't take it. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Danny Wiseman will not take on Pete Weber today as he'd like to. He didn't make the show, but Pete is in. And with one more championship, he moves up the ladder. Tying Parker, ball at third, fourth place all time. Could have his 29th, and he could for the first time in his great career defend a title. He won here last year at the Tar Heel Open. He takes on Ryan Schaefer when we return to Burlington next. Forget last year's Tar Heel Open when Pete Weber stepped up in the 10th against Roger Bowker, needing only a mark to win. He was faced with a huge challenge. Oh, Moore God. is wide open. Got pity. All he needed was a mark, and he's made it difficult for himself. What a match, what a moment for Pete Weber. Pete Weber, why is it so difficult to win, or to, re, to, uh, to win on, not only to win on the PBA Tour, but to defend a title? Well, it's hard because, I mean, look at the caliber of players you got out now. The, 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 the kids coming out today are just that much better than when I came out, and they're more knowledgeable, and they're hungry, and they don't, they don't take any crap off anybody. I understand. Now, we've seen the players play all over the lane today. What is your plan of attack on the lane condition? I'm going to play them the same way I have uh, for four days now, and it's pretty much deep inside, letting the oil feed the ball to the right and the, and the drive bring it back. Thanks, Pete. You're going to need these. Good luck. Thank you, Randy. Dave Ryan, Pete Weber looking to do what he's never done before, successfully defend his title. Randy started wearing those sunglasses. Because of the glare on the TV pair, the extra lights that are brought in by our light, taking on Ryan Schaefer here, looks for his fourth career title. And Pete said before the match, I'm not going to stop using those sunglasses. Just helps me focus a little bit, let me keep the blinders on toward the pin deck and not get distracted as much. And how can you argue with his recent success? Third show in four weeks, but Schaefer would like to take him down. Here's a four pin for him. Ryan Schaefer, four pin, first shot, said this lane really hooks. They've only got one, one spot to go, and that's left. It's going to keep moving in towards the center part of the lane to find more oil. The 11th on the money list coming into this week. Last week, just 78th in Orlando. After 17th place in Dallas, six of the U.S. Open in L.A. Pete, though, has been hot. Still said today before the match with us that he feels fried. I mean, he feels like he's burnt out. It's been a long season. No. Not a good break there at all. What do you know? There's a lot of pressure for really the most significant figure in the sport. 479, ball goes in high. He's going to get the ball to the left side of the four pin, slide it into the nine. We saw him make a difficult spare here last year. With a tournament title on the line, and this one early in the semifinal match, Pete's able to convert the difficult spare. Something about split conversions here at Country Club Lanes. Last year making that ugly, ugly split to win, and right now converts the 4-7-9. Crowd loves it. What a showman. Second frame for Pete. Little break. Trips out the four. He'll take it gladly. Well, that shot there was yummy. Actually a little bit higher than the shot before. That one strikes. Pete Weber having the higher average. Lower spare conversion. 
Lots of strikes from both guys. Big averages. It's the only way you got to the telecast this week. Ooh, get some help. Just the four up for him. Similar hit to Pete Weber's. Here comes the four nine. And then the, the nine gets tripped out. Four pin, four pin to start the match for Ryan Schaefer. Perfect single pin conversions. Fourth time we've seen Schaefer on TV, terrible. and that is a tough That's open. Terrible. Misses. Hard to believe that this would happen to Ryan Schaefer. Perfect on single pin conversions all week long. Whiffs the four pin. No daylight between ball and pin there. Somehow it didn't knock it over. How does he respond? Close as you're going to come. You miss it. Well, that's not a very good response for him. Ball way light and out of the pocket. And I saw this all week long. When the middle part of the lane broke down and the guy started to move left, they got to a certain spot where if they threw the ball too far right like that, it would not recover. Got to get the ball to the left side of the head pin, drive it over into the 10. The ball will take care of the 2-7. Yeah, exactly. Misses the easy four pin, makes the hard wash out. Head pin's going to go to the right. Takes care of the 10, the ball does the rest. So early on, we've seen some challenging spare conversions, and each player has responded. Schaefer and Weber. Back to Pete. Double Wood, the 2 8 again. Tracy is with us again. Got to hit the ball. Right, Cuccioni on her right, one of our PBA bowlers as well. Tracy, a bowler herself, knows a lot about the sport. Yes, she does, and I talked to Tracy last night. I said, I asked her, Tracy, what's the difference between Pete now versus the start of the season? Two, eight. She says it was all his confidence. He's, he's tamed down everything. He's more relaxed. So you see what he's done in his matches? Actually, knocking out Tommy Baker, 48-year-old Tommy Baker. Great week for you, Tommy, to allow Mike Wolf to get in. And he's nice success against Ryan on TV. Pete said he's in his comfort zone after working with John Jowdy at the Masters. He told us today he just feels so relaxed. Excellent execution again from Pete. As he knocks them all down in the fourth frame, second strike of the match. John Jowdy changed his push away. He got him to push it more up and out versus down, which changed Pete's timing. Got the ball at the release spot at a better time. Bottom of your screen, round of 16 match play results. And we see Dave Traber, Randy's roommate. Other PBA competitors, how they did this week. See this split here? Weber made this last year to win. Get the ball over here to the right side of the three. Throw the three into the four seven. The ball takes out the six ten. That's the idea. Hey, who's that guy? Real trouble. Not Ain't bad, right? Good to see you. Match play again? Yeah, I snuck in there. I got beat by Michael Fagan, who's about half my age. After the open frame, he's really struggling. However, he has done an incredible job converting difficult spares. He's two for two in that department here in the semifinal match. Great shot. Now watch how far right this goes. Almost goes in the channel. It stays on the lane, and you have no idea how hard that spare was. Comes down to, if you're going to have the open frame, have it early. Happened in the second for him. Pete is working on a strike, though. In his upcoming fifth frame. Ball changed, looking for his first strike. Yeah! RFS, baby! That's me! Not PDW, but RFS for Ryan Schaefer.
Pete has won here in North Carolina. He's won in Louisville. Throughout his great career. Strike there on the 18th. Speaking of Louisville, that's where we're headed next week. The Older Eaters Open starting at 12.30 Eastern time here on ESPN. 9.30 on the West Coast. Don't miss all the exciting action from Executive Strike and Spare Lanes next week, 12.30 Eastern time. And every week on ESPN leading up to the World Championship is a couple weeks down the road from the Taylor Sportsplex outside Detroit as we wrap up this PBA season. ESPN in sync showing you Pete Weber uh, lane 17 with a strike. Ryan Schaefer rallying after the early open frame in the second with some outstanding conversions. Difficult spares for Schaefer. And the emotion running high in Burlington, North Carolina. Who will emerge and make to the finals to take off Ryan Boss? We find out in a minute. To Country Club Lanes here in Burlington, North Carolina, the Tar Heel Open. You know, in this humble announcer's opinion, some of the greatest players of all time on the PBA Tour have always had fast feet, and Ryan Schaefer is no exception, which brings us to our Dexter approach. 145-pound Ryan Schaefer, now watch, he gets the fast feet going, he has to get momentum going to the foul line. Now watch this, he's a power player, he's gonna get every bit out of each shot. Now he's got the wrist starting to cup right here, there's where the power's gonna start. Go ahead and roll. Now the wrist is really starting to bow. At the release, he's gonna straighten that line out, kinda like throwing a yo-yo. That's how revolutions are created, straight up and down finishing position, a lot like Walter Ray Williams Jr. The subject of this week's Dexter approach, Ryan Schaefer from Elmira, New York. Wanted to give a shout out to Eugene McHugh, who persuaded Ryan to practice on Monday when Ryan really was tired from the trip from Florida, didn't want to compete out there too much. And loosen up, get a workout in. But Eugene insisted. Ryan Schaefer said that helped him get loose for the whole week, kind of was his foundation for making the show. I'll tell you what else got him focused was getting into the top eight on the points for the world championships. Making the show this week virtually locked him into the top eight. He's in fifth place right now in the world list. Pete Weber's in seventh. March to the world championship. They want to get to the Super 16 and bypass the qualifying. Schaefer starting a rally here. Now watch the difference between game one where Ryan Schaefer started playing with a different bowling ball. There's the big loft. That ball's going to go out to about the third arrow. Now watch two games later. A good eight, nine boards left. Back to Pete. The right of the TV pair. Perfect ball. And Dave Ryan, there's a lot to be said for experience. Pete Weber obviously has a lot. He knows how fast the lanes are changing. And you know what? We just came out of commercial, and Pete Weber, to me, looked like he moved further left to allow for the ball to hook more. He wanted to make sure we got a word out to his fan club in Hood River, Oregon today. Nan Notaboom, Tess Lorenzen, Megan Pruitt, Shauna Ramsey, Ellie Bard, Christy Tao, all watching closely. They're teachers in the Hood River school system. Pete has been enjoying their support. And he enjoys that, too. <laughs> All right. Well, remember I said how Pete was uh, more relaxed and kind of just chilling? Well, <laughs> give him four in a row, five in a row, and all of a sudden you're going to see the PDW show. That fan club may make a trip to Detroit. We understand. It's in the works. If they're listening, Pete is rooting that on. Back to shoot. Only six. Can't get it down the lane. 3-6-9-10. Or as we call it on tour, the big ugly. This ball never pushes far enough to the right again. Got to get the ball to hook into that. Stay on the lane. The ball will throw the six into the ten if done properly. Eighth frame. Can he get Look another out. difficult spare? Yes, he can. Great angle from our crew watching the that ball really that five flirt thing. with the channel. You hear Ryan said that's probably harder to pick up than that five-count split he made. 
The big ugly. I like that. <laughs> have you ever made the three, six, nine, ten, Dave? I can't say I have, Randy. Okay. I've had plenty of spares. I don't make many. <laughs> From the sunglasses of Pete to Ryan Schaefer, what he's watching. Gets a break. Using two different bowling balls. Higher friction ball on the left lane, lower friction ball on the right. Can't keep up with it. Catches a nice break here, a little high hit. 4 7 10, the last three to fall. But right now, Pete Weber in the driver's seat, working on five in a row. There's the other five down here. Six straight strikes and a 51 pin lead for Pete Weber. See what Pete's learned how to do on pattern A in the Cambridge Credit Tournament in Long Island. Pete knocked me out in the round of 16. That was a week after your win in Philadelphia. That is correct. Just four pins needed for Pete Weber to the finals. There it is. He's going to take on Ryan Voss. The stage is set. Two Hall of Famers. Two of the biggest stars the tour has ever known will go head-to-head -head here in Burlington, North Carolina for a championship today. I asked Brian Voss. He said he wanted Pete Weber in the finals. When I mentioned that to Pete, Pete said, oh, yeah? Tell Brian, bring it on. I'm not scared. That's the kind of emotion we're going to have in a few moments, folks. Do not touch that remote control. I'll reserve Pete for now. Interesting side note. Oh, Pete Weber and Ryan Schaefer both wearing the same shirt. And you know how Ryan Schaefer is with his shirts. Very superstitious. <laughs> This one's going in the trash. Thanks, Mike Roth, my producer. Ryan Schaefer said that Storm asked him politely to wear it, and he's a company guy. Besides, all of his other shirts are out of the karma. So he's throwing them all away and starting over. He's wondering where that was earlier in the match on that four pin because he did whiff on it earlier for an open frame that really hurt his chances to win this match, that in the second frame. So a bit of a sarcastic look there from Ryan. As again, he'll go down without a title this season. Still an outstanding week for Ryan Schaefer. His bid for his fourth career title continues, but Pete Weber will continue in a moment. Head-to-head -head with other Hall of Famer Brian Voss. Banquet presents Do the Math. Don't forget... Tar Heel Open, Burlington, North Carolina. We started out with uh, 52 total titles amongst our five finals. Seven majors, six of those belong to Pete Weber. Hockey coming your way tonight at ESPN and ESPN 2A full slate. The Blackhawks and Billy Jocelyn Tebow are trying to stop Mike Manano, Bill Garrett, and the surging Dallas Stars. Then at ESPN, it's either the Rangers or Avs, Wild or Blues, head-to-head -head either of those games, depending on where you are. Tonight on ESPN and ESPN 2. Welcome back, everyone, to Burlington. Incredible field here down to the final two, and really an incredible stage set between these two Hall of Famers. They've uh, won a total of 50 titles, 43 combined years on tour. The question is, who can emerge? Well, you know how I am with predictions, so I'm not even going to bother. But you can, you're you right. You can't script it any better than this. PDW show against the great Brian Voss. There's going to be fireworks in the title match. Voss has one title this year. Pete has not won, but he tries to defend a title for the first time ever here in Burlington. Our Geico Direct Championship Recap. In our wild card match, it was Ryan Schaefer taking care of Mike Wolf. Beautiful strike there. The score was 216, 194. And in semifinal number one, the great one. Ryan Voss needs a spare to beat Steve Jarris. Look out! Just enough. Voss finished late with a four-bagger. Staying clean, taking care of Steve Jarris. And the match you just saw, PDW. 
Good strikes like that. Six of them was far too much for Ryan Schaefer, which sets the stage for the big showdown. Our Geico Direct Championship recap. These two are the oldest amongst the final five here today. The most experience and far and away the most career titles. Now they match up head to head when we return. Who will emerge amongst the two Hall of Famers? Will it be Brian Moss looking for his second title this season? Or PDW, Pete Weber? They match up when we come back. Last week at the Via Bowling Open in Orlando, Florida, Battle of Southpaws, Jason Couch and Chris Hayden made it to the championship match. Couch would leave back to back seven pins in the eighth and ninth frames, leaving the door open for Chris Hayden to become the sixth first time winner on tour this year, also becoming only the second player behind our very own Randy Peterson to go undefeated in match play. Unforgettable day for Chris Hayden. Certainly no first time winners here with Brian Boss and Pete Weber as we're set for the championship match. Brian, at the start of this week, you said you wanted Pete Weber in this final match. Now you have a chance to take on your fellow Hall of Famer. How can you respond? Well, I uh, I love bowling against great bowlers. You, you get a lot more pleasure out of uh, beating the best. That's what I wanted. That's why I'm here, and, and I think that's what the fans wanted. Good luck to you. Thank you. Pete, Randy asked you earlier about not defending a championship in your great career until this point. What would it mean in terms of the significance to finally defend a championship? Well, first and foremost, the title comes before anything else. So right now, I'm just I'm just thinking about going out and making the best shots I can to win this title. When I come to, if I get the chance to be a defending champion again, we'll cross that road when it comes. Best of luck, Pete. Randy, what a treat. Two Hall of Famers head to head. We don't see that often in a TV final. And you think Chico Valenzuela and his lovely wife Robin are excited about this next match? Thank you both very much for a wonderful week here. And get ready, folks, because it's about to go down. Brian Voss will start the match, which means he will finish the match. Remember his win in Memphis. He thrives on getting up in the 10th frame, finishing, and throwing the shots he needs to to win. He asked for this moment, how can he respond? Double wood, 3-9, comes in high. Not a good opening shot for Brian. That ball was left out of his hand, leaving the 3-9. Sticking with that same high friction bowling ball. And of course, the last time I said somebody was 100% on spares, they missed the forepit. The curse of Randy by Brian. The curse of the Randino. The curse of the Randino. Very nice. I like that. Twenty-eight career titles, almost two point five million dollars amongst the incredible accolades. Six majors. Had a good start. Trips out the four pin. Hopes for a seventh major in the World Championship in two weeks. You see, Pete Weber had the higher average, even though Brian Voss did what he did in match play. Pete Weber, for the eighteen games of qualifying, qualified number two. Knocked down a lot more pins in qualifying. Pete's spare conversion a little shaky, though. 81.6. Fifth time, Randy, they've matched up on TV. And the third time with a title on the line. Oh, 10 pins somehow doesn't fall with a late messenger. This looks like a beautiful shot. Clean off his hand. Out to about the eighth board. Watch it come sawn back. Leaving the late 10. The difference between what Pete Weber's doing at release and Brian Voss, Pete's rotating around the side, Brian's hand is much more up the back. What that translates to into Dave Ryan is that Pete can go around it a lot more. Brian is going to have to use a little bit straighter line unless he starts rotating around the side as well. There's the approach. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't like 
like that ball. Was that a flight attendant? Bye bye. No, that was just a yeah, that was a stone even... nine that got yeah. tripped. <laughs> you can see, right. even though Brian is playing in, he's going much more direct through the front part of the lane. Pete's going sideways through the front part as Brian's leaning, begging, and then he finally gets the nice break, tripping the nine. And he leads the league in this. He's done that how many times today? <laughs> nice. Three or four, I think, we've seen it. You see the difference of the change of direction down the lane? Brian Voss doesn't get near the back end that Pete Weber is getting simply because of what each guy is doing with their hand at release. Brian's more roll, Pete Weber's more side turn. Covers the mark nicely. So the amateurs competing at the Tar Heel Open this week. Jeff Wilson of uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, not far from where we are here in Burlington. Billy Lucas from Silver City, North Carolina. Siler City, excuse me. And T.J. Jones of Danville, Virginia. All doing their best as amateurs this week in North Carolina. Third frame for Pete works on a spare. Doesn't get help with the messenger across the deck. Watch his release. That hand is going to go flipping around the side of the ball right there. That gets the ball to push right. Fingers were a little clutched, trying to hit it, leaving the late 10 pin. Right. Come on, now. Remember, we've got to watch for Pete Weber's hand being open at release. That's when his hand and release are the cleanest. With today's modern equipment, you don't lift on the bowling ball anymore. You open that hand, and you get your hand out of it fast and clean. Thumb first, fingers last. You saw the shot clock moments ago. Another player being threatened. Open hand. And release. He broke that down perfectly, Randy. And a perfect delivery for Weber. Flush in the pocket as he shreds the rack. A strike in his fourth frame. He and Brian Moss are battling for a PBA Tour title here in Burlington, North Carolina. Who emerges? We'll find out next week. Burlington, North Carolina for this week's stop. Next week, we're off to Louisville, Kentucky. The PBA returning to that fine city for a fifth time. 52 lane center, executive strike and spare night right next to the airport, not far from Churchill Downs, from University of Louisville campus. Freedom Hall right across the street as well. Tune in. We'll tell you all about it next week on ESPN. Brian Voss, fourth frame championship match. Winner takes home $40,000. And valuable points. Very critical for Boss right now, the way he stands. And the Marshall World Championship. And there's some help for the fall. Walter Ray Williams Jr. has clinched a spot. As have Barnes, Duke, DeLutz, and Ryan Schaefer. P. Weber in seventh place heading into today's matches. But with Voss still in there, he needs to win this tournament and fare very well in Louisville to make the top eight. It's going to be a challenge. The points on the line today, 25,000. It all goes up, though, in two weeks, along with big bucks in Taylor, Michigan. Light. To me, just a, a piece of equipment that does not return and does not allow him to open the lanes up. And Brian's more than capable of creating hook and throwing the ball right and having it get back. And I, I think there's an equipment issue. During the break, we were arguing back and forth, Paul Kaler, Nick Hogan, myself. There's got to be an issue with, with Brian Voss's equipment. Trying to stay perfect. Multi-pin, spare conversion rate, not there. Head pin in the 10, stay up. For Brian Voss and what could be an absolutely devastating open frame for him in the fifth. Pete works on a strike. Fifth frame for him now. Strike here. He's up 23 pins. Pete taking advantage of that strike. Now watch what he does with his hand. This was a shot where he left the weak 10. You see the fingers are going the other direction. 
Watch the next shot where the ball is perfect, perfectly dead flush. Now watch his fingers right there. You can see all five of them. Watch for Pete to open that hand. That tells you how clean the release is. Six frame. Shreds the rack again. The emphatic response almost knocks the sunglasses off his face. Almost knocked himself out. <laughs> Here's where you're going to get a massive adrenaline rush, and Pete Weber's going to show you what it means to throw big shots under big time pressure. He's got a three bagger. The fourth, fifth, and sixth. Now Voss responds to the open frame. That drifts high. Lots of trouble. 4 7 10 up. 4 7 10. Bad ball reaction for Brian Voss. Confused. Got to get the ball over here. Drive the four into the 10. The deck nearly tripped out that 10. In the first match of Brian Voss bowled, he didn't look very comfortable. As you see how close he comes to making this. He wasn't comfortable with his reaction. He manufactured something. Got his ball to face the 1-3 pocket. A game later, the ball reaction's gone and unsure of which direction to go in. Digging a larger and larger hole for himself as Fox. Lane 17, hoping for a better response. Two paying up, and it's going to be nearly impossible to come back now on Pete. Gonna make a move. Needed a win today to get past two million dollars in his career. So us before the matches. This afternoon here in Burlington, it would be a very special accomplishment. But unless he can make a miraculous turnaround and Pete completely falls flat on his face. A strike here for Weber. He's got a 54-pin lead looking for a four-bagger. Seventh frame. It's been a while since Pete Weber has won. Right here in Burlington. More than a year ago. straight. Ever since working with John Jowdy at the Masters in early January, Pete Weber's been bowling phenomenally. Three out of the last four weeks of telecast. Great showing at the U.S. Open under brutal conditions. And now Pete Weber looking to close the door on Brian Boss. Strike here is up 64 pins. Eighth frame for Pete. Gets a little help for the six. And the lead expands again. <laughs> and you think it's Pete's turn or what? That ball crosses over, goes Brooklyn. He trips the six pin out. Some weeks it just doesn't matter what you do. It's your week to win. And this is Pete Weber's week. Best ball today for Voss in this championship match, certainly. Still, he's Ain't got... over yet! Huge <laughs> deficit, he plays well, with the crowd a bit. Well, Brian... Better strike on this one. <laughs> well, Brian, it, it kind of is. <laughs> Petey's going at 239 pace. The best Brian Voss can shoot is 205. Foundation frame for Voss. Coming to you from the Tar Heel Open, Burlington, North Carolina, Country Club, Lanes West. Dave Ryan, Randy Peters, our entire PBA, ESPN crew, going to Aspen, Colorado for the Winter X Games next on ESPN. Over. But Pete first wants to take care of business, and he has won a title. And for the first time in his great career, has defended a PBA Tour Championship. Hard to believe. having fun with Pete now. 
We're going to have to change the name here to Pete Weber Lanes, I think. Right. <laughs> Fast track to the end since this one is over. And what a week for Pete Wettick. Good to see you on TV now. Thanks. Good to see you too. 29th career title. That moves him up the list. Fourth all time with Parker Ball the third. Victory number 29 in his great career. Yeah. Say happy Game birthday. Deep in the attitude, see you. Happy birthday. The last time Pete Weber won a PBA title. Until now, he has finally defended a championship. Takes care of us in the finals today. ESPN's exclusive live coverage of the PBA Tar Heel Open is brought to you by Dexter, the number one bowling shoe in the world. What's your size? By Miller High Life. To live simply, proudly, boldly, manly. This is the High Life. And by Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. Something Pete Weber had never done before, defend a PBA championship, and he's done that in Burlington today. So now you've finally accomplished the feat. How does it feel? I think it's a great feeling. I, like you said, it's the first time I've ever defended a title before successfully, and damn it, does it feel great. It just feels so good. So now I come back to Burlington, North Carolina next year. I'm the defending champion again. Congratulations on a great week. Thanks. Thanks, Star, for making the number one balls in the world. Yeah. PDW is a champion again. The updated point list, Walter Ray Williams Jr. still a leader, but Pete Weber up to more than 207,000 trying to make that top eight and the round of 16 at the season ending world championship, the Super 16 in Taylor, Michigan. So congratulations goes out to Pete Weber. Join us next week for the PBA Owner Eaters Open from Louisville. Now stay tuned for the 2003 Winter X Games 7. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Now for the entire crew, my partner Randy Peterson. It's Dave Ryan saying so long from Berlin to North Carolina. The man of the moment, no doubt about it.